webinar. And, uh, we will be sharing with everyone who registered and all of you who are attending, we will share both the slides and the video recording of this. So if you have to pop out um, and can't stay for the whole thing, you will get the video and the slides. You don't have to take scribble notes of URLs or any uh, information from the slides as we'll be sharing those. And as I said in the beginning, I'm Lenny Tailman. Uh, I'm a scientist by training and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Protocols.io. And it's my pleasure um, to start the Getting Credit and Recognition webinar. So um, before we dig into before we dig into the actual content of the webinar, I just wanted to say that um, we'll take a look at the agenda in a second, but this is not an intro webinar to protocols.io. Um, so we're not going to be going through all of the features of the editor and the basic functionality. Um, if you're looking for that, um, take a look at the link here, protocols.io slash webinars. We have regularly scheduled webinars every month that include intros and advanced training that is much more focused on the platform specifics. Um, you also don't have to wait for regularly scheduled webinars. Um, if you go to the link over here, you'll see that you can book a one-on-one -on -one demo at a time that is convenient for you and a day of your choice. Um, so these are easy ways to get quickly up to speed, or if you want a um, highlight of some particular portion of protocols.io and have specific questions, um, feel free to request the demo and join uh, any of the, and or join any of the regularly scheduled webinars. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at the agenda for today. So um, we'll be focusing on the reasons for sharing methods, um, how most people do it on protocols.io, uh, the more recent uh, new development with Public Library of Science, where you can actually peer review and turn the protocols you've shared uh, into papers, peer reviewed papers in plus one. Um, and the broad use of protocols.io across different publishers and journals um, to improve reproducibility of the methods that are published and to give more credit uh, to all of you who are doing the method development. So that's the agenda. Um, before we talk about these three things, um, we are actually going to start with a little bit of a background of what I call method reconnaissance. Um, and there is a question. Yes, feel free to put questions into the chat or through the Q&A. Um, and there is one comment already, which says, let's check, which says, I could not find the presentation PowerPoint. Um, we will be emailing it to everyone who has registered. And um, at the end, during the q and I'll also make sure if you remind me, uh, Tahoe, thank you for asking this. If you remind me, I will drop the link into the chat here, but we will also email it to everyone who registered for the webinar. So you will have the link. I just haven't shared it yet. Uh, sorry about that. All right. So uh, before I talk about parts two, three, and four, I want to give a little bit of background um, on what I said I call the sort of the renaissance of uh, method sharing that is really, in my, in my opinion, uh, a feature of uh, this century and um, something that started not that long ago. And just as background, I said that uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Protocol. So um, to introduce myself and it connects to getting credit for method sharing. So I am a scientist by training. I got my PhD at UC Berkeley and then I went to do uh, postdoctoral research at MIT, and it was my experience um, at MIT where I was doing um, single cell uh, RNA microscopy, RNA fish, where I spent the first year and a half of that postdoc um, figuring out that one step of the microscopy pro protocol that I was using uh, needed adjustments. So instead of a microliter of a chemical, needed five uh, in that step with a particular enzyme instead of a 15 minute incubation needed an hour. And it's a small, you know, just one part of a long protocol uh, step that 
took me a year and a half, literally took a year and a half of my postdoc. And at the end of the day, I realized this is not a new technique. This is a correction of something that is previously published. Um, so it's not a new paper. It's not a new method. It's a correction of something from nature methods. And I don't have any way of sharing this, um, any good way of sharing this with everyone who's using the technique in yeast. Um, I was doing yeast genetics research and it was the realization that A, I don't get credit for this year and a half and B, everyone who's using this technique is either getting completely misleading results in yeast on single cell level um, or has to spend a year or two rediscovering that tweak. So I became sort of obsessed with creating a central place where we can easily share the details and get credit uh, for the method development work. And what I've learned since starting protocols.io is um, that there are challenges with method sharing. And it is interesting when we look back historically, when we get started with this intro, it's interesting to actually take a look at nature methods. Um, it was actually launched, uh, here's the announcement of its launch in 2004. Um, and uh, you can, there, there will be the link to this article. Um, it's kind of fun read. And they announced our goal is to create a highly visible forum for the presentation of novel methods because we believe that major methodological developments often take their roots in the cross fertilization of different disciplines. By contrast, the method sections of specialized journals, although extremely useful for targeted peer groups, do not grant technical information the wide exposure conducive to interdisciplinary exchanges. Um, the journal rather addresses, this journal rather addresses the broad audience of researchers working in the life sciences. And I've had the pleasure of meeting and working with the founding editor of Nature Methods um, starting I think in 2016 or 17 um, when she uh, joined Public Library of Science. And I've learned from conversations with Veronique Kimmer, the uh, founding editor of Nature Methods that there was actually a lot of skepticism uh, from her colleagues within the Nature Publishing Group uh, whether Nature Methods would work. It was this sort of, but these are just methods. That's kind of a supplement. That's not a research, big research result. Who's going to publish methods in a standalone journal? How absurd. Um, and of course, since 2004, um, Veronique's uh, intuition has been proven correct that there's a lot of demand it's now uh one of the um one, one of the high profile journals in the nature portfolio and obviously is very successful and after that veronique uh continued to push for um, more venues for protocol sharing and recognition and helped to launch uh, nature protocols and protocol exchange from nature um and starting in 2004, sorry, let's get back to the presentation, just a second. And so that was 2004 that Nature Methods launched. And since then, um, there are a whole host of other journals um, and platforms dedicated specifically to sharing research methods, to sharing protocols, um, obviously protocols.io that I'm very partial to and involved with, but uh, from the cell press, Elsevier family of journals, there is Star Protocols, BioProtocol, Cold Spring Harbor Protocols, Journal of Biological Methods, Methods X, Scientific Protocols. Um, and these are not all uh, Journal of Visual Experiments, uh, and I already mentioned protocol exchange um, from nature. So these are not all of the venues, but just examples of things that got started um, really in the last uh, 15, 16 years. Um, Job, I think, launched in 2006. Uh, BioProtocol is 2012. Protocols IO launched in 2014. Star Protocols is much newer. And so we're seeing more and more journals and platforms dedicated to sharing methods, which is wonderful. And 
um, deserves to be shared. And, you know, we often spend months or years on things that should be simple, but are not. And it works in one organism and we take a closely related organism and just things that you would think would take a couple of days, take weeks or months. Um, and very frequently we still don't get the credit for all of that time because journals are looking for new results, uh, new research uh, results. There's a comment, the presentation did not show up. Um, can folks can folks put into chat sort of thumbs up? Can you see the slides? Am I sharing? Oh, I don't, I think the sharing somehow turned off. So you should be able to see the sharing now. Thank you so much for um, that comment. Uh, now it is visible. Uh, so this is the, these are the slides that I was showing, the quote from Veronique. I was reading about the launch of Nature Methods. And here's the slide with, with the many different venues that uh, have gone live over the last couple of years. And what we believe at Protocols is that it's not just one single key new groundbreaking method that should be shared as in nature methods. What we believe is that all of that tweaking, optimization, corrections, those months of work, um, those months of work, getting something that should have worked quickly but didn't uh, to work, you know, it was working in geckos, but it doesn't work in another lizard. It was working in grasshoppers, but not ladybugs. All of that method development, we think, can save people a lot of time and we think should be recognized um, and rewarded. So on protocols.io, we welcome public sharing um, of all of the methods, uh, not just the first big um, groundbreaking one. And as a snapshot, um, as a snapshot, uh, I mentioned that we launched in 2014 and there, for transparency, there are two sides to protocols.io. And there is um, a public side, which is free to read and free to publish. And there are over 13,000 protocols in the uh, repository of uh, open access research methods on protocols.io. And then the private side where you can see we have over 45,000 uh, protocols and in individuals accounts. That's more for, for uh, semi-private collaboration within laboratories, within companies, uh, for consortiums. And is the private collaboration that we charge for. Universities often sign up, companies, biotechs, Food and Drug Administration. So there are site licenses or individual paid workspaces for folks to collaborate. So we charge for private sharing of protocols. But if you are making a knowledge public, um, you can share unlimited number of protocols and it is both free to read and free to publish. And this public sharing is the part that obviously connects to uh, getting credit and recognition. This is the part that people will discover. And uh, last year, there were over a million uh, researchers that visited protocols.io looking at these thousands and thousands of public protocols. So um, this is what I mean. This is the part that we're inviting you to share when you have, um, when you have spent time uh, tweaking, optimizing, correcting, or developing new methods. So at this point, I'm going to exit out of the slides um, and I will switch to a quick live demo. So the protocols by default start out privately. Um, you decide who to share it with, when to share, what permissions to give to them. And if and when you're ready, there is a publish button there is a publish button that allows you to get a DOI, get a uh, citable, get a citable uh, visible version that uh, gets indexed in Google and is discoverable. You can include it in papers, you can tweet it. Um, and that's the 
public sharing sites. So we're going to take a quick look at one of these public protocols. And you will, uh, just for those who are, who are new, um, do not worry when you see the publish button, don't be afraid to click on it and play with it. You will not accidentally instantly make something public. There is a flow. It will take you a couple of minutes to put in the authors, affiliations, make sure you include everyone who should be on the protocol. Um, you'll go through a couple of checkboxes and in the end, you'll confirm that your co-authors, um, your PI are, um, or your group leader are, okay with you making the method public. Um, so you won't accidentally make something public. Um, and um, in terms of keeping things up to date and you know, just the nature of sharing that we see uh, in these 13,000 public protocols, um, you will always be able, even after you publish something, it is fixed. It does get a DOI, you can cite it. You can include it in papers. Other people can cite you in the papers that they publish, um, but you're always able to come in and create, click new version on your protocol. And if there are corrections and optimizations, easily share that. And both versions are then available. We automatically guide everyone to the most up-to-date um, version of the protocol. But for people that want to see the previous version, it is available that does remain accessible. And there is even a compare button that lets you quickly see uh, which parts of the protocol are the same and which ones have changed. So you can see step one is the same between the original and the new version and step two has changed. And then the subsequent steps are the same until step nine. So um, you can easily share protocols. There are comments, discussions on top of them. The protocols are dynamic and interactive. But as I said, I'm not going to be digging into uh, all of the functionality and features. Um, but I do want to say that on every public protocol that you see, we share the metrics. So we try to communicate everything we know about use and adoption of this protocol, how many views it has, how many people are exporting it, how many people are printing it out, how many people are commenting on it, how many people are using it as a template and making their own copies as they use it with their organisms, uh, with the equipment that they have in their laboratories, how many people are clicking run um, and are stepping through it as they're experimenting, uh, as they're performing the experiments. And every time that we see a paper published that mentions the protocol, uh, if you see it in PubMed Central, we uh, add those citations uh, on the metrics tab to a growing list of papers that mention this particular protocol. So um, this is a very quick overview. Um, and as I said, there's 13,000 public protocols on protocols.io, hopefully many from your fields. But what I want to highlight in terms of making the methods that you share discoverable, getting more credit and recognition in terms of uh, increase, increasing their vis visibility, um, you can definitely on a protocol, just hit the publish button and you get the DOI, you can cite that. Um, here's the metadata tab, which will have the protocol citation that you can grab and uh, use and everyone else can as well. Um, but in addition to just making something public standalone, you can also put your public protocols in communities. So there are public workspaces that you can create on protocols.io. Again, those are free if you are sharing publicly. And here's an example of one actually started uh, by a professor at uh, Australian National uh, University. So this is one of the um, biggest workspaces started by a researcher that we have on protocols.io, but we have hundreds and hundreds of communities. And you can see there are over 500 uh, researchers that are part of this workspace. There are uh, almost 70 protocols that have been shared by these members. There are 
over 100 discussions of these protocols. And by joining workspaces that relate to your field of research and protocols.io, when you publish a protocol, you can associate it with one or more of the workspaces that you're a member of. And what's nice about it is that when you add, when you publish your protocol on protocols.io, um, all of these 500 folks will be notified that there is a new protocol. It increases the visibility and discoverability of the protocol that you're trying to share. So it's not just as people search for the technique on Google, but uh, people in your field, if there is a vibrant workspace, they will, um, they will have an easier time learning that your protocol exists. If you create a new version, so you can see this uh, protocol is now on version eight. Um, when you create a new version, if and when it's appropriate, then you make that public. Again, all of the members are notified so people can stay up to date um, and can see when uh, discussions are happening. And this one is from New Zealand uh, Malagan Institute of Medical Research. And um, when you're on protocols.io, if you do a search, if you do a search, by default, it will look for protocols that match your search, but you can also switch to workspaces and that will give you the list of public workspaces uh, that match your search. So whatever field you're in, take a look if there is a good vibrant community. So here's one from Metabolomics. Take a look if there is a good vibrant community that you should join that is open to everyone. Uh, in the search results. And if you're in a field where there aren't many protocols and researchers on protocols.io that have organized into a community like this, feel free to click plus and create a new workspace, make it public, invite your colleagues in um, and create a space like this for troubleshooting method development and sharing uh, protocols in your community, but um, with over 125,000 researchers that have created accounts on protocols.io and with the many workspaces that we have, there is a pretty broad representation already. So uh, please do go to the search and take a look to see if there are workspaces um, for the community that you're in. Um, and we have many, many examples. There's a yeast community, coronavirus method development, wastewater surveillance, neurodegeneration method development communities. So many, many different public workspaces, human cell atlas, uh, single cell human uh, genomics uh, research community. So many, many workspaces. And you can see on the protocol, um, it th there, there can be one or more workspaces. So this protocol that I was showing in the beginning is actually part of the human cell atlas method development community. And many protocols can be shared to one or more workspaces as appropriate. So you can be a member of different communities. And again, this is another example. There's 200 publications, almost 600 members. Um, and you can see that you can navigate from a workspace, from a, these public communities to a protocol. And you can also go from a protocol back to the workspaces. Um, and you can see this protocol here is actually part of two different open communities on protocols.io. Some, some protocols I think are even in three, four uh, different workspaces, all right? So uh, this is really straightforward. Uh, the 13,000 public protocols that we have, most people that are sharing are sharing simply by clicking publish on protocols.io. It's not related to a paper. It's not re related to any journal. They just have spent time on method development. Don't want others to spend the same time, want to get credit and recognition for it. And they simply, when it's time and they feel confident in the method, they click publish and share it. And about 60% of the traffic, daily traffic to protocols.io um, actually comes from uh, Google searches as people 
uh, look for specific techniques, protocols, I.O. results come up uh, pretty high up. All right, so going back to the slides, one of, um, one of the consequences of sharing protocols is nicely highlighted, is nicely highlighted um, by a professor from University of Adelaide uh, in Australia, uh, Luciano Margalotto, who said, 80% of my recent collaborations have been a direct result of sharing our protocols publicly on protocols.io. And he, along with another researcher, um, have actually created a workspace uh, to curate uh, single cell methods um, for human biology. So uh, you, can, you can check out uh, the protocols that they have shared, but uh, obviously it's a wonderful quote, but a lot of people uh, share publicly, they share on social media, um, and for some techniques, you'll see a lot of versions, you'll see robust discussions. Uh, it's an easy place, instead of answering questions over and over by email, um, you can answer once on protocols.io directly on the step of interest. And um, it's, a, it's a good way um, to help yourself, uh, as you can see with this quote, and get more credit. And it's a good way to help all the other researchers that are doing similar things um, and save them a couple of months or weeks or years uh, of their life. And the Next thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, newer. Um, this is something that we launched uh, together in partnership with the Public Library of Science and the journal Plus One. And uh, it's a way to get even more credit for your method development. And this is a partnership uh, that allows you to uh, submit your protocols um, for peer review at PLOS One. Uh, it started two years ago. And um, again, in the slides, there will be links um, to examples of such papers. But uh, this is a wonderful co collaboration with PLOS One where they have created a new article type called uh, Lab Protocol. So you can see here, this is, uh, I think this is the first paper that was published. Uh, when this partnership launched uh, back in May of 2021. And um, the uh, new article type N plus one um, is really meant for that recognition and uh, in mission of, you know, in line with the mission of plus one um, is aiming to give credit not to one method, but um, to all cases where there was significant uh, effort in getting something to work or improving uh, an existing method. So um, I should be clear that you know in the slide in the beginning of the presentation, I showed that there are many different journals um, that have launched over the last 15 or so years dedicated to sharing methods. And you know your communities, you know your fields, you know uh, you know the journals that are appropriate for your research. So of course, uh, when you share on protocols.io, you're always welcome. We see people publishing in Nature Communications and eLife, uh, Plus Biology, all over. So you're always welcome to take the protocol from protocols.io. It is fully open access. You can drop it as a link into any paper um, in any journal. But the nice thing to highlight about this partnership specifically is that it is a close collaboration between Protocols IO and Plus One, and the editors at Plus One, they know that when you're submitting into this lab protocol channel, um, they're looking for method development and they're checking for completeness of your protocol. They're doing a methodological review, um, not. Uh, review for uh, the impact of the discovery. They are not, um, the bar is not, have you discovered new biology? Do you have new uh, critical results? The bar is, is the significant method development and does it look like this 
protocol uh, work. So you're welcome to take a look at, I think, uh, the 51st papers that have been published since May of 2021 um, in this channel, and there are more and more coming out uh, every month. Um, and you can see that the uh, paper links to the protocol uh, very prominently. The uh, protocol itself on protocols.io links back to the paper. So if you click see protocol from plus one, that will take you to protocols.io. And you can see there's the link back to the paper. Uh, we have a peer reviewed badge uh, for these types of protocols. And of course, versioning and all of the functionality that exists for protocols.io um, is still here. So even though the paper is published, you can come back, you can keep improving the protocol, you can answer questions, have Q&A discussions. Um, so it's a really nice way of uh, taking protocols and protocols.io and turning them into papers without losing the ability to improve uh, and share corrections and optimizations on your protocols, even though the paper publication in plus one is fixed in time. And um, from uh, some of these papers that have been published, you'll see uh, that there are wonderful quotes from the authors who are really happy with the experience. Um, and uh, this protocol uh, from Professor Monica Trujillo and colleagues was actually profiled uh, in New York Times uh, for Jacopo. Uh, his lab protocol was actually his first paper as um, a PhD uh, student. Uh, this is a group leader, Simon Troder, and for him, the protocol was uh, the first paper as a senior author. So it's a way, if you're a graduate student, um, it might take years, you know, you might, it might take you a year to develop a method and then four more years to get results, but um, you don't have to wait five years to get your first paper. Um, with this partnership, you can actually get credit for that year of method development and um, have the protocol peer reviewed and published. And um, moving sort of more broadly um, outside of plus one, um, the other thing that I want to highlight is that if you're using protocols.io and have your protocols in there, it makes it really easy to um, share your protocols as you're publishing your research papers. So even if you're not publishing a dedicated protocol paper, when you do publish your research results, uh, using protocols.io makes it easier to uh, write your method sections. Um, and there are um, many, many journals. There are many, many journals that now encourage use of protocols.io in author guidelines when you submit a paper. And this helps to address a common problem that we often see in published papers where the method sections are vague. So here's one of my favorite tweets on this topic from a postdoc at UC Riverside who said, I'm looking for a protocol in the 1997 paper as described in 96 paper, find 96 paper as described in 87, find 87 paper, paywall. So even the University of California doesn't have access to it. And this is quite a common and frustrating experience. Uh, and this tweet is from a biologist, but here's one from a physicist. Devices were fabricated as previously described, previously described, previously described, and the original references devices were fabricated with conventional methods. So good luck uh, reproducing uh, the, the uh, methods from these papers. And I have a long collection of Twitter where, on Twitter where I've bookmarked uh, complaints like this. We're not going to go through all of them, but I did want to say that um, there are over 500, probably close to 600 different journals um, that recommend protocols.io and author guidelines. And um, there are more and more funders that uh, expect you to share protocols. So um, speaking of incentives and getting credit for it, funders are starting to catch up 
that it's not just code and data, but both funders and publishers are starting to recognize the importance of sharing detailed protocols. And here are just some examples. Um, this is a paper from a group in Japan um, that uh, included very detailed protocols as part of the research publication. Um, here is a tweet about another paper on uh, polymorphisms of Darwin's finches. Um, and you can see they're saying with this paper, we also wrote up our lab protocol protocols.io. Um, this is current biology, this is in gigabyte. This is a partnership with Springer Nature, but these are examples from different publishers, but here's how it looks in practice. So uh, here is a PLOS biology paper. And if you go to the methods section, when you click on materials and methods uh, in this paper, you'll see uh, it says that the detailed methods for Drosophila rearing, media prep, microbial manipulations are available as a collection on protocols.io. Um, and by the way, it's very easy if you have multiple methods, uh, instead of citing each one, um, you can publish all of them with a click of a button if you add them to a collection and the collection itself gets a DOI and then you can include that. And so in this example, uh, the DOI actually links to a collection with I think 10 different protocols. And when you click on that, um, it takes you to protocols.io. The collection actually has been versioned. So you get a pop-up asking if you want to look at the original version one or navigate to the newer version. And um, that's the collection on protocols.io. Again, linking back to the plus biology paper. And in the metadata uh, next to the protocol citation, we also ask readers um, who are using your protocol. If it's part of a published research paper, we ask them to cite the protocol and we say, please remember to cite the following publication along with this protocol so that it's both your protocol and the paper um, that should be cited by anyone who's reusing your techniques. And I want to, whether you use protocols.io or Zenodo or protocol exchange or Figshare, whatever, way you are sharing protocols, um, I strongly encourage you to use repositories rather than just adding a PDF to um, your research paper. And here's a good article on reasons uh, not to just use supplementary files. Um, we're not going to go through all of this, but there's really a push um, to share in repositories. Um, similarly to how we share DNA sequences in repositories rather than as supplementary files or on lab websites. Um, same way that we share protein sequences and PDB in repository instead of uh, contact us for hard drive. Um, same things apply to protocols. And there is a beautiful demonstration uh, of what happens when you share in a repository. Uh, that's one of my favorite examples on protocols.io when I give talks like this. And um, this is from a discussion on Twitter where a researcher from Chile is looking for a technique for RNA extraction from cortical neuron cultures. A postdoc from UCSF says um, there are a couple of methods uh, that should work for you on protocols.io. And here's one that seems most appropriate. And what I love about this example is that when you look at the protocol itself, it actually turns out to be um, from a paper in the journal GigaScience. Um, I think it's also from an Australian group. Uh, these are standard examples that we give. Uh, it's not just because of the time zone of this webinar that we chose. Uh, all examples from Australia, it's just a coincidence. But what I love about this is the protocol uh, accompanies this giga science paper and the paper is on parasites of uh, stickleback fish. And what's amazing is the authors, not only did they make their paper more reproducible by including, including a link to the detailed protocol on protocols.io, 
but they also made their method available for everyone else because the chances that this researcher who is looking for cortical neuron cultures is reading this paper on uh, parasites of three-spined stickleback fish are close to zero, right? So when you use a repository, you get more credit, there is more visibility for your protocol and there's sort of over the shelf use, not just um, from the readers of your paper, but from those that come to the repository and are looking for uh, these techniques. So you just amplify the power and the impact of the method development that you've done when you share in repositories um, instead of as supplementary files uh, just on the research article. Okay. Um, and with that, we're almost at 45 minutes. I'm happy to stay on as long as folks have questions. But with that, I will stop. And um, you should feel free to unmute yourself if you can, or raise your hand and I can unmute you, or um, type a question into uh, the chat directly. And thank you all so much for taking the time to uh, join this webinar. And actually, this reminds me, while you think of questions, um, I'm going to put the link to the presentation as promised. And again, we'll be sharing, we'll be sending both the video and the slides to everyone who registered and attended. As long as you uh, click register on protocols.io, you'll be getting the slides and the video, but I'm also, the link to the slides into the chat right now. So you should be able to see that. Any questions? All right, brilliant. Um, so thank you all again for attending. And if you do have questions, um, if you do have questions, um, my email is lenny at protocols.io. You can also email info at protocols.io. Um, and uh, Nada, uh, who said, thank you for sharing. I joined late. I have had lab work. That's exactly why we record these things. So we'll be sending the video and the slides around. So if you missed a part of this, um, you can always uh, review that. And again, Thank you so much, uh, everyone. Have a good rest of the day.